can we decide that? Before, okay. Okay. Grantrash Mar Bhagavatam Ki. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janma di Asya Yatam Vayar Ita Rata Chate Swabhigya Swarat Tene Brahma Rudaya Adhika Vayemo Janti Jasuraya Tejo Varim Rida Yata Vinimayo Jatra Trisa Gurmrishya Damna Svina Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyang Param De Mahi Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudev All pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisance is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. The primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. Is he only first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, the great sages and demigods. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva parer ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Kriti bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapaturur galitam falam. 
Sukhamakad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavakaha. O thoughtful, O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hediantak Sto Bhadrani. We do not Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki. In this devo in this way, the devotee develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas Tamo Bhavo. Kamalo Badayas Chaye, Cheta Etaran Avidam, Stitvam Satve Prasidati. As he hears more, uh, I'm sorry, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. When these, oh, okay, evam prasana manaso, bhagavat bhakti yoga daha, bhagavat tattva vijnanam, mukta sangha sijayate. By development of, okay, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of uh, pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chashikarmani Dritya Drista Evat Manas Swade Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and it enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse Number 60. Iti ukt tvataru hat swargam narada sahatum buru Yudhisthiro vachastasya 
Hedikrit Vajahat Chuku Chuka Hedi Krit Va Ahaj Chucha Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, along with his Veena, ascended into outer space. Yudhisthira kept his instruction in his heart and so was able to get rid of all lamentations. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Naradaji in, is an eternal spaceman having been endowed with a spiritual body by the grace of the Lord. He can travel in the outer spaces of both the material and spiritual worlds without restriction and can approach any planet in unlimited space within no time. We have already discussed his previous life as the son of a maidservant. Because of his association with pure devotees, he was elevated to the position of an eternal spaceman and thus had freedom of movement. One should therefore try to follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni and not make a futile effort to reach other planets by mechanical means. Maharaja Yudhisthira was a pious king and therefore he could see Narada Muni occasionally. Anyone who desires to see Narada Muni must first be pious and follow the footsteps of Narada Muni. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto, 13th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we don't really understand what our potential is in life. That's due to modern education which dumbs us down to the lowest level of human, let's say, sordid life, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending like animals. Yes, modern education reduces us to be animals, not to be human beings. What does an animal do? They only eat and sleep and have sex and fight or defend themselves. Or attack other people, or attack other living beings. They don't only defend, they also go on hunts and uh, brutally eat other living entities. So, we see that there's this uh, survival of the fittest sort of uh, theme in material nature. The big fish eats the little fish, etc. That is animal life. That's not human life. But uh, you see, uh, when we are reduced through so-called education to live like animals, then there is the struggle for existence. Who's going to dominate? What's interesting, one, one interesting thing about Islam is that they say that there's two types of jihad. One is the external jihad with the kafirs and the unbelievers. And the other is the internal jihad with one's own lust, anger, greed, etc. So that's an interesting thing about Islam. Uh, that they, they see these two types of war going on. This internal war with one's lower nature and external uh, war with the so-called unbelievers. So, uh, by modern education, we are programmed to lose the internal war. That's what I, my point. Programmed. We're educated, so-called educated, to lose the internal war whereby we cannot control the lust, anger, and greed. The three doors to hell. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita very nicely. Where it says in the 16th chapter near the end, it says, Trividam narakasyedam 
Dwaram nasnam atmanaha. Kama krodas tatalobas. Tasmat etat trayam tyajet. There are three gates leading to hell. Lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to the degradation of the soul. Ah. So modern education leads to the degradation of the soul. And that's some people say, oh, what are you saying? You're talking against my child becoming an IT expert? Yes. We're talking against it. <laughs> yeah. We want your child to grow up to be a Krishna conscious expert. Not an IT expert. Not a stock expert. Not a grammarian expert. Not a... Uh, so-called politician. No, we want our children to grow up to be perfect devotees. Well, how are they going to earn a living? Yeah. You work honestly. Whatever uh, activity is suitable according to the Varnashrama system. Now, you want to know what those activities are? Well, depends what qualities you develop naturally. But Krishna consciousness attempts to raise everyone to the Brahminical uh, level. Now, not everyone can do that. Therefore, Prabhupada said near the end of his transcendental activities uh, among us, that I've only established 50% of my goal. The other 50% is Varnasram Dharma. Now, if you read the discussion between, between Lord Chaitanya and, and Ramananda Rai, uh, Lord Chaitanya rejects Varnashram Dharma as the best means to attain Krishna consciousness. Rejects it. So now why would Prabhupada say only half of my work is done, the next is Varnashram Dharma? Well, because not everybody is going to be elevated to the Brahminical level. You know, people are born with different types of qualities. The Varnashram system is the best system to gradually elevate people to a higher standard of consciousness. Through cooperative work, through training, through gradual elevation to the level of uh, Vaishnava. Vaishnava is transcendental to the Varnashram system. But yet, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was the perfect Vaishnava, accepted sannyas. And this was a shock to the caste brahmanas because they were always saying, you know, uh, that uh, Vaishnava is transcendental to these varnas and ashramas. Even Lord Chaitanya said, that, I am not a uh, grihasta, I mean, I, I'm not a brahmachari, I'm not a grihasta, I'm not a vanaprastha, I'm not a sannyas, uh, I'm not a Brahmana, I'm not a uh, Kshatriya, I'm not a uh, Vaishya, I'm not a Sudra. I am the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant ad infinitum of the gopis of, of Vrindavan who are uh, servants of Krishna. So it seems that he also uh, rejected the Varnasram system. But the problem is not everybody is going to become a pure Vaishnava at least not quickly, because of very strong material attachments. Therefore, the Varnashram system, or the modern equivalent of it called Daiva Varnashram, is suitable for the organization of the masses in society. The ones that, you know, the 99.9% .9 who are not amenable to becoming Krishna conscious right away. So, uh, you have to think about the, the general mass of people also. But through massive sankirtan and massive prasadam distribution and, and book distribution, eventually people say, okay, well, look, you want us to change. We're not ready to change completely, but uh, tell us how we're going to do this. Well, okay, we're going to give everyone a chance to elevate themselves through uh, working cooperatively in a social structure. Social structure is 
brahmanas, chachis, vaishas, and sudras. So each one of those uh, social, let's say, divisions have suitable activities that they can engage in. For example, brahmanas should be engaged in the study of the Vedas. And along with that, bathing three times a day, especially when you go to the bathroom, and uh, after going to the bathroom, and, and eating only uh, prasadam, and basically sattvic food, no meat, fish, eggs, etc. And you know, following the regulative principles strictly and so forth. And the chatras, they're also f supposed to follow the rules and regulations, but you know, there is, there is some uh, compromise made with them because they have to be chatras. So they can hunt, but in a restricted <coughs> way. And according to strict rules, they can also have more than one wife, they can also, in some cases, eat meat. But again, according to the Vedic restrictions and rules. And then you have the Vaishas. They, they should be engaged in farming, cow protection, and uh, some kind of business activity, but, but restricted. Uh, you have to, there has to be cow protection. They should maintain you know, vegetarian diet. They should give charity to uh, the other three classes and then the rules of how to do that and uh, they can they're allowed to have some property and and wealth but they have to give most of it in charity right. and okay so and then the sudras they're supposed to cooperate with the other three classes and 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 the other three classes have to take care of them so we see there, is, uh, there are rules and regulations regulating the types of work people do in the social system. And if they follow those, in the association of genuine brahmanas, not, not greedy people who pretend to be brahmanas, but genuine brahmanas, uh, they can also attain their material needs through uh, certain types of jagyas, the karmakanda section of the Vedas, so that they don't have a hard struggle for existence. Uh, and the competition that's in like a, a materialistic society is not there. there, there there's, it, this Vedic society is a gentle society. People get along, they cooperate. Uh, people respect the leaders because they also are restricted in their sense gratification and there's a lot of limits uh, to what they can do and what they can't do. And everybody's following because it creates peace and harmony, you see. So it's an ideal system for social, uh, and gov uh, social organization and governance that leads to people gradually being elevated and not being victims of Trividam narakasye su yedam, dwaram nasanam atmanam, kama krodas lobas, tota lobas, this lust, anger, and greed. But modern education teaches you to be a victim of lust, anger, and greed, and therefore always being, always struggling in material life, and uh, in, in, in vicious competition, and uh, it builds up a lot of enmity. Enmity means, means uh, resentment and anger and frustration and envy and strife all the time. Always problems in the family, problems in the society, problems between ethnic groups uh, uh, and all these, all this uh, what we call uh, identity politics breaking up society into little, uh, many different groups based on race, based on sex, based on uh, 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 sexual orientation, and then based on uh, uh, all kinds of false uh, identifications. It used to be uh, uh, 
uh, lesbian and homosexual. Now it's lesbian, homosexual, bisexual, and non-sexual, and this thing and that thing. The, you know, the LGBT, XYZ, ABCDA. You know, there's so many different identifications nowadays. You know, you can't even use pronouns anymore. You can't say he, she, or it anymore. They have, they have special ways of addressing people. Otherwise, you you know you'll lose your job if you don't say that. You know, so you see, the more and more there's bifurcation of society into all these identity groups, and uh, and people adhere to this this group or that group, and it creates enmity and competition and all kinds of uh, unfavorable situations in society. So Prabhupada says, the beginning of demoniac life is described here. One tries to satisfy his lust, and when he cannot, anger and greed arise. A sane man who does not want to glide down to the species of demoniac life must try to give up these three enemies, which can kill the self to such an extent that there will be no possibility of liberation from, his material, from this material entanglement. So, this is the purpose of modern education, to reduce people to being slaves of lust, <coughs> anger, and greed, and not attain liberation from the material entanglement. So why would we want to force children to be subjected to such an educational system, you see? Only because you say, oh, they won't be able to get a job. <laughs> no, there are many jobs that you can get. You don't have to. Uh, you know, if, if, of course, you want to be Bill Gates or you want to be Steve Jobs or you want to be this one or that one, then, then you say, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. But if you want to be a good human being, a devotee, those, those type of jobs are not necessary. What's necessary is uh, following the Varnashram system, fitting into it. Brahmana, Chachya, Vaisha Sudra. Well, most people are going to be uh, Sudras, and some people, I mean, if you're working for someone else, you're a Sudra. Okay. Doesn't matter if you're making $250,000 a year or you're only making $25,000. You're a Sudra. You're working for someone else. If you're uh, a Brahmana, you're not working for anybody. You're independent, but you have a very strict uh, life of, uh, uh, let's say, study and preaching and teaching and so forth and doing all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, spiritual activities. And if you're uh, a chatya, then you have to be trained in military arts. You have to be trained to be self-controlled, just like, you know, there's, there are these military arts like, you know, kung fu. Right. or uh, different types of uh, military uh, fighting arts, right? Well, in, the, in the, the Japanese, the Chinese, they teach people you have to have a guru. And you begin by offering your uh, uh, homage and obeisances to the guru. And then the guru starts teaching you all these things, right? You know, you know whatever. <laughs> so... Uh, but there's some discipline. There, there's acceptance of a teacher. And, and you know, you, you learn how to fight. You know, but on, usually it's, uh, there's defensive fighting and there's aggressive fighting. You know. So uh, all these things are based originally on yuyutsu. You know, judo comes from yuyutsu, it's a Sanskrit word. It's, it's, it's how to fight according to rules and regulations. It's, it's not like today. There's no rules and regulations. You can attack anybody, whether they're armed or not armed, during the day or at night. You know, previously, Chetras could only fight during the day in sunlight. And at night, they stopped fighting automatically. And then they would e even eat together, even though during the day they were trying to kill each other. They would eat together and fraternalize, you know, and then in the morning they assume trying to kill each other. <laughs> That's civilized fighting. Right? There's an example of that in World War I on Christmas night. 
you had, you know, you, you had the Germans on one side and the, and the Allies on the other side, right? Uh, they were fighting from trenches. It was a horrible war, very horrible war. Anyway, the Germans started singing uh, Christmas carols. And uh, the British troops, they hear the Christ Christmas carols on the other side, you know. So they started singing Christmas carols. And then the Germans, unbelievably, started walking toward the British. Now, during the day, they have machine guns, there's bombs, there's, there's poison gas. They're trying to kill each other, right? The Germans started walking toward the, the British. And when the British soldiers saw this, luckily, luckily, their uh, commanders were not there. They were just the regular soldiers. So they didn't shoot the Germans. And they saw that the Germans are walking toward them. So they get up out of their trenches and they start walking toward the Germans. And the uh, Germans are chanting Christmas carols in German and the English are chanting the same Christmas, Christmas carols with same tunes, but in English. And they come and they meet each other. And they don't have, you know, some of them may have had guns, someone may have not had guns, but they don't shoot each other because it's Christmas Eve. They're both Christians. They both believe in the same gods or God. And they're singing the same Christmas carols. So they have the same culture without politics involved now, right? So then they shared food with each other. And they spent the whole night singing and talking to each well, I don't know, talking as much as they could, but mainly singing and sharing food. Then when the sunlight comes back, they, 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 right before sunlight, they move back to their trenches. But they were thinking, you know, look, why are we fighting like this? You know, we have the same culture, we have the same religion. And this is crazy, you know. Then the commanders found out what happened. And they were really upset. And they came on the British side and said, what the hell are you guys doing? You know, you can't fraternalize with the Germans. They're our enemies. The other guy said, well, I don't know, you know, they sing the same songs we sing. They have the same God we had. They celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Christmas. He said, stop talking nonsense. Start shooting. They said, well, we, won't, we don't want to shoot. We know those guys. They're nice people. They said, this is insubordination. Either you shoot or we shoot you. you know? So they forced, the commanders forced them to start shooting. And then the Germans had to shoot also. But there was an example. This is a real thing that happened. It's very interesting. Uh, you see how politics separate people and Krishna consciousness brings people together. See? So what we're seeing today in America is politics, like terrible politics. I mean, it's always been there, but sometimes it gets worse, like, like now, where people get divided into all these different groups and they all become angry and, and they become vicious and they want to fight, they want to burn, they want to kill and so forth. It's all based on lust, anger, and greed. Prabhupada said all wars are wars of, for sense gratification. One, one group wants to have sense gratification in this way and the other group wants to have sense gratification in another way and then they start fighting. So, so uh, but look what our potential is. You can become like Narada Muni. He starts out being the son of a single parent family. There was no family. It was just his mother. And she couldn't even afford to give him an education. But by the association of pure devotees, he ends up in his next life becoming Narada Muni, the greatest saint in the history of the universe. That is our potential. That's what you can become. Now, would you say... No, no, no. I want my kid to be an IT guy, or I want him to be a lawyer, or I want him to be a doctor. I don't want him to be Narada Muni. Are you crazy? You going crazy or what? <laughs> you don't want him to be Narada Muni, a man who can fly through space, go to the spiritual world, or go to hell and, and, and preach. And He's liberated, completely liberated person. There's nothing, he's not subject to the laws of material nature. You don't want that? You want them to be, you know, working, you know, oh, we, we got to deliver, make these deliverables. That's impossible. How are we going to do it? You know, we can't sleep. We can't eat. We can't do anything. We can just do this work. 
It's a type of slavery, isn't it? And always anxious, oh, I might get laid off. And then when I go, how will I pay my mortgage and how will I pay this and how will I pay? Does that make sense? Yeah, and then all, all the time in the back of your mind, oh, I want to have more sex and I want to have dudes and I want to buy this and I want to do this. You know, that's not a life. That's hell. That's, that's what happens in hell, right? You're always worried. You're always in anxiety. You're always doubtful about the future. You're, uh, you're, you're forced to do things you don't really want to do, you see. So one should therefore try to follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni, not Bill Gates, not Steve Jobs, not Larry Ellison or Larry this or Larry that, but Narada Muni, and not make a futile effort to reach other planets by mechanical means. That's what they're trying to do, reach other planets by mechanical means, right? Maharaj Yudhisthira was a pious king and therefore he could see Narada Muni occasionally. Ah, you want to be able to see, you, sh you should say, I want to see Narada Muni also. Right? I don't want to see Trump. I don't want to see Biden. I want to see Narada Muni. Right? Anyone who desires to see Narada Muni must first be pious and follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni. That's what we're doing. Narada Muni wrote the Pancharatra. It's, it's how to worship the deity. How to live uh, you know, on, in the mode of, of goodness and then Eventually, transcendental goodness. That was that's his, his book. We're following Narada Muni. We're following a Pancharatra system. Right. Okay, thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of so the first canto, thirteenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Are there any questions? Yesterday, yes. Okay. Well, common sense like this. One time there was this leader, he was the president in New York, and he said to the devotees, well, the devotees found, you know, they would clean his room and they found that there were chicken bones in the uh, trash bin. So they got yeah, confused, you know. Where did the chicken bones come from? <laughs> so obviously the, the president was eating chicken. So they confronted him and said, what, what, what's going on here? You know, <laughs> there's chicken bones here. He said, oh, well, he says that... Uh, Milk comes from the cow, and meat comes from the cow. What's the difference? It's both coming from the cow. The devotees got confused. They didn't know the philosophy strong enough to answer him. So they wrote a letter to Prabhupada. They said, Prabhupada, he's eating meat. And, and, and when we confronted him, he said that, you know, meat comes from the cow and milk comes from the cow. What's the difference? And, and we didn't know what to say. Prabhupada said, yeah. You eat meat or you drink milk and it turns into stool. Why don't you eat stool? That also comes from the cow. And then they said, oh, okay. So they, then they told him that <laughs> and it defeated him, right? And they said, look, you're nonsense. You know, Prabhupada said, you are nonsense. Yeah, the meat comes from the cow, milk comes from the cow. What's the difference? Well, stool also comes from the cow. Why don't you eat stool? You know? So they were able to see through it. At once, he con confounded them. He confused them by saying that, right? So that's common sense, isn't it? Prabhupada was using common sense. You say meat comes from the cow, milk comes from the cow. Well, stool also comes from the cow. Why don't you eat the stool? You know? And so that's common sense. You see my point? So if Krishna... Is the origin of everything, and he says he is uh, in Bhagavad Gita, and then Vyasadeva says he is. All the Mahajans say he is, you know, like Narada Muni and Vyasadeva and Lord Shiva and Yamaraj, and you go down the list. All the Maharaj, all the Ma 
the uh, Mahatmas, all the great devotees, the Mahajans, uh, and Krishna, and uh, Arjuna says he's the Supreme Personality of God. So if he's, if he's the source of everything, and everything's emanating from him, then how can you say uh, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya? If the, Bra if the Brahman, if the Lord is absolute truth, then whatever is coming from him is also the truth. Right? It's not that it's an illusion, it's real. Because he's real. That's common sense. And there's a lot of ways you can use common sense. Like, for example, uh, Another nice example is, let me see. Prabhupada says that uh, yeah, another common sense. We say, or uh, Bhagavatam says, there's only one sun and it's illuminating the whole universe. And the scientists say, no, no, every star is a sun. Prabhupada says, okay. Well, in the daytime, the one sun is illuminating the earth. And at nighttime, you don't see the one sun. But you see all the stars. How come they're not illuminating the earth? If they're all suns, how come at night, it is nighttime? They're all there. You can see them. They're not being hidden by the moon. <laughs> you see? That's common sense. Right? If they were actually suns, then there would not, not be any nighttime. Because... The moon is only covering the sun. It's not covering all the other stars. They're, you can see the other stars, but they're not lighting up uh, the universe. It's some light, but, but it's a reflected light. It's not, uh, it's not original from those stars. You see? That's common sense. And then another common sense. They say they went to the moon. What do they show for it? Right? Not the six stones or some dust in the Smithsonian Institute. And the, and the stones and the dust look like the same stones and dust that you can find in New Mexico or Arizona. <laughs> so they spend, you know, uh, so many billions of dollars and all they have to show for is a few stones. And how come they stop going? When I was a kid and I saw the moon landing, landing on, on television and in the newspapers, they're saying there's already real estate agents getting ready to sell real estate on the moon. And Pan Am Airlines, which doesn't exist anymore, they're already planning flights to the moon in, in the 1970s. This was like 1968, 69, when they had the moon landing, right? And then 1970s comes, no one's talking about moon landing anymore. No one's talking about going to the moon, you know? And, and the scientists say, well, the astro astronomers say, oh, there's no water on the moon. We're going to go to Mars. <laughs> and today, 60 years later, there's no moon. No, no, nobody's going to the moon. They don't even talk about it. They don't even talk about it. And now they're saying there is water on the moon. <laughs> you see, it's all nonsense. Then, then they send you pictures of Mars, but the pictures look like something, you know, in Arizona or New Mexico or somewhere else, you know. <laughs> the whole thing is a hoax. It's all nonsense. Yeah. So, yeah, but we're, we've been dumbed down by so-called education to believe nonsense. We believe it. If you tell someone they didn't go to the moon, oh, no, 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 we have proof. You know, <laughs> one, one kid in our own synergy school, uh, the teacher was saying that we all come from monkeys. And, and the kid said, oh, no, well, we don't believe that. You know, we think we all come from Krishna. He said, what do you mean you come from Krishna? I got proof. She screamed at the kids, I got proof. The kid was like shocked, you know, <laughs> because his teacher was not a devotee, right? And, 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 and they, they got shocked. They came home. They were afraid. And how angry the teacher. And what was their proof? Said, well, there is the, uh, there's the uh, tailbone in the human being. That's proof that we all came from monkeys. That bunch of nonsense, right? <laughs> so th this is what's happening. That you, if you say something like that, they get angry at you. Right? They intimidate you. Yeah. That's school. Uh, Back to uh, the common sense about the cow, right? 
Yeah. And so, I mean, could you say, and, and could you use this also as common sense that mm -hmm. you, get, you get the milk from the cow, you don't kill the cow. In order to eat the meat, you have to kill. Uh, yeah. So, obviously... The milk is made, by the way, by the, from the blood. Yeah, but it, you don't kill a cow, you don't... Yeah. In fact, actually, we should use All the, the protein, you don't have to kill the cow to get the protein. Exactly. You can eat, drink the milk. So that's, that's a very common sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do all those horrible things. Exactly. To, yeah. Yeah. And all, all this is common sense. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I just go back to the translation of the, of the verse itself. You just kept his instruction of not an instruction not a money in his heart and so was able to get rid of all the mentors. This is a very important statement. Could you elaborate on that? What, what happened when you give instruction? Well, Krishna tells Arjuna also, Asochan and Basochastvam, Pragna Badam Jabasse, Gatsama Gatsam Cha, Nana Sochanti Panditaha. He says, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. So, Prabhupada said, the Lord at once took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, calling him indirectly a fool. The Lord said, you are talking like a learned man, but you do not know that one who is learned, one who knows what is body and what is soul, does not lament for any stage of the body, neither in the living nor in the dead condition. So, Narada Muni explains uh, these things to Yudhisthira so that he's not going to run off and try and you know, save his uncle or his auntie by pulling him back to the, uh, to the, to the palace. You know, they, let them let them leave the body, Krishna conscious, free from all uh, attachments, material attachments. Let them develop their attachment to Krishna, or at least let them die without uh, worrying about what's going to happen to this, what's going to happen to that. How am I going to? Who should I leave my money to? Or who's going to get this? Who's going to get my car? Who's going to get this? You know. So he, he didn't want him to go and interrupt what Dhritarashtra was doing. He wanted him to, to leave them alone so they could, you know, leave the body without material attachments. So we could say that those in, uh, or say yeah, in, in singular instruction. So we could say that, you know, it, it could have been anybody else who say somebody else who is not in the position of Nada Muni who could have given some instruction to you receive, could you still be able could you could you still have been able to get rid of lamentations or wanted to be qualified in But lamentation is based on attachment to the body, not to the soul. Soul is eternal, right? It's never born, never dies. So you Yudhisthira was only thinking about the body of his uncle. He, he wasn't thinking about, you know, what's, how his uncle's going to free himself from the body, material body, and, and uh, develop spiritual knowledge. So Prabhupada says here, Arjuna argued that religious principles should be given more importance than politics or sociology. But he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul, and the supreme is even more important than religious formularies. And because he was lacking in that knowledge, he should not have posed himself as a very learned man. And he did not happen to be a very learned man. As he did not happen to be a very learned man, he was consequently lamenting for something which was unworthy of lamentation. The body is born and is destined to be vanquished today or tomorrow. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. One who knows this is actually learned. And for him, there's no cause for lamentation, regardless of the conditions of the material body. So the body is not as important as the soul. But yet, everyone's spending their time trying to keep the body young and beautiful, 
with artificial means like Botox, like plastic surgery, like uh, injection of monkey gland uh, juice or whatever. You say they're, 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 they're just concerned with the body. They're not concerned with the soul right up to the moment of death. And they're so crazy, they have themselves frozen in liquid nitrogen hoping that in the future they'll get unfrozen and, and uh, they can remain, you know, have more sense gratification with this body. So, and then lamenting because of the loss of the body. But that's, that's, that's only, that lamentation only due to ignorance. Just some statement came in my mind. Uh, I remember Slobati Siddhanta, I think, Slobati Siddhanta to say that this material world is very dangerous place of course. Uh, not a fit place for any gentleman to live. Yes. But uh, mainly he said that, but he said, okay, oh, well, he said this material world, uh, what is exactly the statement? Material world, um, a severe, a place of a severe, more severe, and more severe tests need to pass in the material world. Mm -hmm. in yeah. But in order to come out to come out successful in those tests, we need to hear the, uh, to receive the instructions from a liberated soul. Yes. Yeah. The tests are just like Arjuna was tested by the battle of Kurukshetra. It's a terrible test. Mm -hmm. He has to kill his own relatives. But he did it. Why? Because as we read as we read today, Bidyate Hridaya Grantis, Chidyante Sarvasamsaya, Shiyante Chashikaramani, Drista Evat Manishwari. That um, thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Uh, material affection based on the body. That's a hard knot, it's very tight. Right? Just like, let's say you're walking down the street and let's say a woman sees a very handsome man, but she doesn't know who he is. And all of a sudden she thinks, oh, he's very handsome, I would like to be with him. Right? But then he looks at her and he smiles and says, excuse me, can I speak to you? And she said, yes, and smiles back, right? And then uh, he said, what are you doing tonight? Said, oh, I don't know. Why? Would you like to go to dinner? Well, yeah, I would like to go to dinner. Thank you. So they go to dinner and eventually they have sex. And now there's a hard knot. You know, they're, now they're walking hand in hand down the street. And some crazy guy comes over to the, his girlfriend and says, Hey, babe, why don't you hold my hand? Right? And, and the guy gets really angry and starts beating the guy, beating him like this, you know, and they have to pull him back, otherwise he's going to kill him. Why, why did he do that? A hard knot of material affection. You see, it hardened as soon as they physically got together. And now he's ready to kill somebody. They does not even know. Because he said something that, you know, seemed to be insulting to his wife, you see. It's hard not a material effect. It's extremely dangerous. It can stop you from being Krishna conscious. It can, it can force you to do things that are crazy, that you had never done before. But you know, everybody can make you uh, get rid of all lamentations. It has to be spiritual, powerful personality. Like here in case of another money. Yeah. It's like Arjuna could have could have got rid of his lamentation if he was not in, he was not instructed by Krishna, who is the powerful uh, divine personality. So if he only yeah. in case of another money too, is a great divine personality, therefore used uh, the Udis uh, was able to get rid of lamentation. Yeah. So in order to get, I mean, I mean material world is uh, categorized about lamentation, fear, lamentation, and illusion. Mm -hmm. But and in order to become free from 
three things. Three things. You have to hear from. You have to get divine instruction, like. Uh, Not only you hear it once, you have to hear it continually. Sure. Yeah. Because our disease is, we forget easily, and just like it says, in the fourth chapter, it says. Vitaraga Baya Kroda, Manmanama Upasrita, Bahavo Gyana Tapasa, Puta Mad Bhavam Agata, being freed from attachment, fear, and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me. Many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. So this Vitaraga Baya Kroda, becoming free of Raga, attachment, baya, fear, and krodha, anger. These three things are keeping us bound up in the material world. All right, we'll stop right there. Hari so in, in order to get rid of that, we have to hear from Sadhu. Yes, yeah, yes. By taking refuge in me, many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they attained transcendental love for me. So you get knowledge from Krishna and from devotee. Yeah, how do you bowl? So next week and tomorrow we start chapter 14. Yeah, how do you bowl? Who goes to Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai?